do a review of Stoner by John Williams, a 1965 novel. Uh, you'd think, oh, written in the, in the 60s and called Stoner. It's that kind of novel. No, this is a campus novel that starts in 1910 and uh, ends sort of af just after world after world war two and uh the the titular character is william stoner and is anything but uh somebody who partakes <laughs> in that sort of recreational drug his recreational drug uh and the reason probably one of the primary reasons you should read this book his recreational drug is literature is reading uh he is a uh a passionate austere silent meditative uh, portrait of a reader. And that's why you should be interested in this book. That's why you should read this book. Uh, not only that, uh, because of the, the prose, uh, because of how uh, John Williams, uh, born in 1922, died in 1994. Um, his prose is kind of, is very kind of austere and clear and precise. Uh, and the, the narrative of this guy's life, because we follow uh, William Stoner from him entering uh, the University of Missouri in 1910 uh, through uh, two world wars, through uh, the stymieing of his uh, intellect, his, his, his academic career, through uh, the um, a disastrous marriage, through uh, a, uh, an affair which is also is gets thwarted. Uh, by through through his feud with uh, the the guy who's timing his academic career uh, to his death, where he dies fairly unregarded, probably going to be quickly forgotten by his colleagues and by uh, his students. Uh, is is there's there is such a narrative drive of each one of these. Um, um, stages of the cross, as it was, not a religious novel, but it's like we we kind of hit each landmark, bang, 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 each chapter, and it kind of drives it drives you through uh, this narrative of of this guy's li life. Um, now you're probably thinking like, wow, wow, this sounds like a complete bummer, um, but it's not. It is not a bummer. Uh, it is a guy who it is a guy who um, does fail. <laughs> does fail, is thwarted uh, in kind of a, most of the stages of his life. Um, you know, yeah, his professional life doesn't go anywhere because he feuds with uh, a, uh, a, 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 hunch, a guy who's like basically a hunchback with matinee idol looks who uh, wants to kind of promote somebody who... Um, is does not have does not have the chops and stoner has his ideals about this university as uh, as as his friend dave masters who gets killed very quickly uh in world war one that this is a refuge it's a refuge from the world it's a place where uh incompetence and those who just aren't kind of capable of existing in the real world can come and that what um this guy this hollis lomax wants to bring in is the world that um He's he's bringing in outside influences that aren't that 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 Stoner fervently believes aren't true, and he's willing to kind of die on his sword for it. Indeed, he, his academic career does die on the sword. Um, but the big thing with this is is that this novel, the central the central concern and the central thing of why why it just so completely uh, captured me is that um, Stoner starts out uh, kind of a, he's a farm boy with parents who are getting basic or subsistent farmers getting ground down. And he gets sent to the University of Missouri, not to study literature, but to study agriculture. But there in a first year English class, he catches it. He catches uh, the beauty, the wonder of uh, literature, and it changes him. And it changes the entire scope of his life. And his mentor is a man who, um, it's Archer Sloan, who is a guy who is getting on in years and is already has, and has that frustration of trying to bridge that gap between the, the, the stuff that he's found on these pages and trying to communicate that to his students. And Archer Stone, Sloan is sort of an example, maybe a cautionary example to, um, Stoner of uh, the guy who couldn't bridge that gap and the bitterness that that bred. Um, but that he takes up that mantle uh, and 
and that's what kind of animates that's what animates his life to a large degree he has an affair later on in his life with a woman a young woman who is a is a grad student they're not a grad student who is um in his in his influence um but it's like it's sort of that kind of that kind of connection that allows him to make a connection with her and he does actually make a connection with students he's actually able to kind of do that kind of that kind of communication that he so desperately wants um this is a novel where unfortunately i think unfortunately uh evil is depicted as deformity uh, as i mentioned uh that uh hollis holly lomax is a hunchback um that that is you know using that kind of a physical deformity to kind of indicate some kind of twistedness twisted of psychology is not something that i think is 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 great uh he has a terrible terrible relationship with his wife which is sort of another in, in, in thing of grotesquerie where this is another point in his life where she basically takes away his child grace from him denies him that kind of uh that kind of joy in his life and indeed twists grace and thwarts her happiness all in effort to basically get back at her husband uh and it's um it's a really it's a really bitter portrayal um now the thing that maybe counterbalances that is that stoner never really i'm never really goes after like he's never like bitter and angry to his wife he does maybe he he has interaction with hollis lomax and there's a certain satisfaction there but it's and by that point it's even it's a de detached satisfaction so um you can I, I i can still i can still sympathize with stoner stoner is a guy who he's just like he has difficult relationships with everyone in a way uh and you know he's an inward guy and 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 bridging that gap it's and unfortunately then you get p figures like this that have played an outside outsized influence on his life um but he take it's interesting how much he kind of takes that and just says no i'm going to be me i'm going to continue on i'm going to indulge myself in just reading one little section here um um sort of a little bit past halfway in of, of in the novel it's like and, and it's into that point in his life where you know you do start thinking about meanings and stuff like that he had come to that moment in his age when there occurred to him with increasing intensity a question of such overwhelming simplicity that he had no means to face it he found himself wondering if his life were worth living if it had ever been it was a question, he suspected, that came to all men at one time or another. He wondered, wondered if it came to them with such impersonal force as it had come to him. The question brought with it a sadness, but it was a general sadness which, he thought, had little to do with himself or with his particular fate. He was not even sure that the question sprang from the most immediate and obvious causes, from what his own life had become. It came, he believed, from the accretion of his years, from the density of accident and circumstance, and from what he had come to understand of them. He took a grim and ironic pleasure from the possibility that what little learning he had managed to acquire had led him to this knowledge, that in the, lo that in the long run of all things, even the learning that let him know this were futile and empty, and at last diminished into a nothingness they did not alter which is somewhat of a um there there's a thing of like he could really feel sad this could be a wine fest uh this could be um william stoner bewailing his 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 lot in life the hard the hard the hard um knocks that he got the the bad the bad rolls of the dice that he got um but there's an, a sense of, of of stoner is like a great reader able to take a step back and look at the wider the super wide picture of all this uh and even though that that maybe doesn't give that much in the way of a comfort it also gives it a strange sort of serenity which stoner finds uh by the end of this novel and you know i, I hear i you know there's a, there the few things i've heard about this novel it's like oh it's a tragic story of this of this of a campus this this academic's life it's like no no this is this is the triumph of this man's life of um of all the terrible things that happened that we that the 
obviously Williams co- can conjure up uh, and Stoner kind of getting going through it all in this very kind of st- serene, but also passionate, full of passion, uh, w- passionate way. And that, you know, finding, finding literature, finding um, these, these comforts in life, finding these toeholds uh, to, to, to be, to be in this life. Um, I came to this novel through uh, Rick McDonald. Uh, he did a review called 13 Thoughts About Stoner by John Williams. And uh, I have not watched that for about a year since he published it. And I'm probably going to go back to and, and listen and listen, watch that right now. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Rick, because that's where I came to Stoner. And um, while there's still things I kind of struggle with, I think about these things of like I really do not like how disability gets uh, used in here as a as 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 a uh, moral indicator, but um, it's also it's it's also just a beautiful book. It's a beautiful book about a reader and um, and uh, a quiet a quiet life that um, th- these this is the kind of life that you want captured in the novel because. Yeah, from the outside world. And it's like, ah, eh, it was nothing. The guy was a failure. Goodbye. It's like, no, no, this captures that. that ca- this captures that life. And that is a triumph too. All right. I will leave it there. More videos later.